What's up everyone, Mark Lobliner, CEO, MTS Nutrition. How much protein should you eat when cutting? Now there actually has been studies on this and one I'm gonna quote is from Helms, done in 2014. Now this study basically showed and getting rid of all the intricacies of the study and all the things we've seen, this also come from my opinion and anecdotal, so you know the study is just something to back it up, but I like to go by other studies, I'm taking the sum of the whole, and my personal experience is a one to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And the reason being is that that is the essential nutrient that's gonna keep you going. And I know a lot of people argue, there's a lot of people online saying you only need 0.8 grams per kilogram, and this and that, and here's why I'm saying err on the side of high. Now, personally, I usually have my clients on around a gram of protein per pound of body weight, but during the diabetic exchange, which I use in a lot of my diet programs, you're also getting incomplete forms of protein, like from their fat sources or from their oatmeal, their carb sources. So really, I'm at around 1.4 to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight. And there's a reason for that. There's two essential nutrients in your diet. And that's essential amino acids and essential fatty acids. There's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. However, carbohydrate is a great form of energy and I do think carbohydrate are great. I love them. Um, personally, I know it's a huge difference when I take them pre-workout. I know your body can burn fat for fuel. However, um, I do feel that glucose is a fuel for the brain, not the only one. Obviously, ketones are great. But I believe that you're, you know, for me personally, I like having some carbohydrate in my diet. I'm not a huge carb guy, but again, towards the end of a cutting diet, people get a little brain foggy and they blame it on the carbs. I think it's just because they have an incorrect ratio of fats to protein and maybe they're eating bad food choices, but, or maybe they're just unhealthy and too lean. But at the end of the day, I want to keep protein high. So my goal with any diet is to set fat where it needs to be set. For someone dieting in the dark recesses of prep, in the deep, dark end of their prep. You're looking at somebody who's on 0.3 grams per pound of body weight of fat. Now, for someone who weighs 200 pounds, that's 60 grams of fat. That's not a lot, right? Now, for someone who's not in the deep, dark recesses, I like keeping fat at 0.5 grams per pound of body weight, which gives you, for example, that would be 100 grams of carbs for someone my weight, 200 pounds. Okay, I'm 220, so 110, whatever. So you got that down, right? You got your protein and fat. You fill in the rest of carbs. Now protein, here's a reason why you want to make sure it's high. Since there is no essential carbohydrate, right? And again, this, the study is there. The study, I can, I'll list it down below. It's by Helms. It was done in 2014. So here's why. Now your body can't really make protein from anything. Your body can make ketones from fat to provide energy, right? So if your body is lacking carbohydrate and lacking protein, your body can take fat from your diet and convert it into ketones, which becomes a tremendous source of energy for your brain, for your body. In fact, some might argue it might even be a better source of fuel for the brain. Now, your body can take carbohydrate and it can turn protein into carbohydrate, right? So if you have excess protein and you lack carbohydrate, your body can convert protein to carbohydrate for energy. Your body, carbohydrate, it's carbohydrate. So your body can take energy from all these different sources. However, your body can't make protein from anything. You need to take in protein. So number one goal is to make sure protein's adequate. Because if God forbid you go over that protein threshold, it's not a big deal. Whatever your body doesn't use to build tissue or whatever else it needs protein to function within the body will be converted via carbohydrate to carbohydrate via gluconeogenesis. So your body can make glucose out of protein, but it cannot make protein out of glucose. It cannot make protein out of fat. Yes, we can argue that glucose and ketones are protein sparing. However, as people interested in a great, awesome, and lean and muscular physique, we always wanna make sure we have adequate protein. That's why setting it erring high at one to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight is where we want to go. So that is what I recommend. Now I have a full diet book that utilizes the diabetic exchange I wrote about at www.dropfactorbook.com. That's dropfactorbook.com. Go ahead and check that out. Other than that, you know, just make sure you're getting adequate protein. And there's the problem. If you're cutting for a show with a ketogenic diet, your protein is going to be about 20% of your intake. Okay, so check it out. 20% of your intake, unless your calories are at like 10,000, that's normally not gonna be enough protein, which is why I normally don't recommend a standard ketogenic diet for prep. However, there are a modified ketogenic diet where it's more of a gluca, um, 
a gluconeogenic diet where you're just eating a lot of protein, a lot of fat, no carbs, and that's fine because we could talk about that in another video. But when you eat carbohydrate alone, your insulin rises and not your glucagon. When you eat carb, when you eat protein and protein alone, your insulin rises, but you also have a concurrent rise in glucagon. So it completely nullifies a lot of the uh, deleterious effects of the insulin spike. But again, I'm not a low carb guy. I'm a controlled kind of balanced kind of guy. I'm a lifestyle kind of guy, even when prepping. So my opinion for you is keep protein at a gram to a gram and a half per pound of body weight and you'll be set. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'm Mark Lobliner, tigerfitness.com and that's not a game.